This is 3D printed. So is this. And so is this. And of course, this. These are examples of prints from a printer called the Mimaki 3D printer. And it's, it's right here. And I really haven't had the chance to tell you a lot about it. And I was just about to start a print on it. And so let me take you through the process of getting this industrial full color 3D printer ready to go. This 3D printer from Mimaki is called a 3DUJ2207. And it has a print volume within eight inches by eight inches by three inches. It's not the largest in the height, but if you have a tall object and you can lay it down, usually you can get yourself some pretty extraordinary prints out of this thing. In order to make the prints, the machine uses inks and it's got C being cyan, M being magenta, Y being yellow, K being black, and then there's white, clear and support materials all within their, their inks. And so this is what's used to create everything on this machine. Everything in these bottles makes these wonderful prints. All of the ink levels are tracked in these different chips that are included with the bottles. So each bottle comes with a chip and you put the chip in and it keeps track of the levels within the bottle. And then if you take it out, obviously it's gonna complain a little bit, but that's it, these little chips. Since we're setting up for a print, I'm gonna take you through all of the processes to get it ready. And one of them is shaking the white. And this is it right here. You can unlock it and you pull it up it's got a little drippy on it. So you get a paper towel and then you just gently rock it back and forth. And you do this because white pigment contains titanium dioxide. And if it's sitting like this for an extended period of time, it can settle. So it's just a good idea to kind of rotate it back and forth easily. You don't want to vigorously shake it because then you could introduce bubbles into it. And that's not something you want in UV ink 3D printing. No. But just some gentle rocking back and forth. There's a lot of systems that utilize titanium dioxide white material and can cycle it through themselves, but this ensures that we do get a good mix. And then you can see the cap there is keyed. It has these things sticking out right there, right there. It's keyed. So you can only put it in a certain way. And then you pull a tab, locks into place, clean up anything that may have spilled and you're good to go to the next step. You lift this to get to the build plate. And the build plate is just this piece of uh, metal and it just rests in there. And, and that's what it looks like. And what you wanna do is take a look at it, blow off any dust if there's any, and then use some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel to just kind of rub it down. Very familiar for the FFF style 3D printing. You just kind of rub it down a little bit and then you just set it in. There's little guides that kind of lock it into place and there you go. There's nothing holding this in other than gravity. And it's not like the machine is moving back and forth like vigorously, it, it just stays. There are some people who do use adhesives on either side to put it in, I've heard that. I haven't had to, and so I just leave it as is. There's a little mark right there, and that's because I accidentally hit it with the scraper that does happen. So just try to be careful if you have one of these, okay? Next up on the menu, you're gonna wanna set the machine into place to do what's called head maintenance. So you go to menu, maintenance, and you go down one, and then you go head maintenance, just like that. Now you're watching it go into head maintenance mode. It's gonna move the build plate to the back, and as you just saw it, move the head from right to left so that we can access the panels over here and over here to clean what we need to clean. Now we can lift this access panel, drop that down, do it to the other one, and check it out. You're now looking inside an industrial machine, and I'm gonna take you through it. Before we get in with the cleaning part of it, uh, any UV printer you have to do this with, whether it's a 3D UV printer from Mimaki or one of their 2D printers. Uh, you, you have to clean it. So we have these soft sort of um, foam cleaning tips and we put a solution on it. This is washing liquid and it's, it's got some, some warnings on it. So heed those warnings. What I'm gonna do is uncap it. There we go, right on that, that foam there. And that washing liquid, that little bit right there is enough for me to do what's needed in here. Uh, and over here, 
there's some parts that I just need to drag it over to make sure. So you can tell it looks good like that. And then I'll drag it in here and we'll take a look at what it looks like afterwards. So along this wiper, I'm just gonna wanna run this on either side. And this is the wiper that goes across the heads just to make sure nothing's hanging down. And then these little cups that the heads can sit in when it's doing cleaning, we drag this on the outer edge, just like that. And so now take a look. We've actually gotten some of that icky off of it. That's it for this side. Let's go to the other side. So under here are the print heads and there's two of them and they're thousands of dollars a piece. You have to be really, really careful. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of take this easily around the edges of the print heads. And that's just to get any of that extra stuff that builds up. I mean, we're getting some stuff on there. <laughs> Next part is this, and it's, it's not the easiest to get into. Um, it's, it's a suction tube and you have to detach it and then you can take out the piece and it kind of, it has the collection of uh, some, some icky stuff. And I'm gonna do it right now. So if I lift that out, there we go. And then I put this here just so it can drip. Ah, and I got it out. There we go. You can kind of see it right there along the blade. That's gonna be stuff that didn't deposit onto the model or was a little bit higher. So as that head is going across the model, laying down all of that ink, it has a roller and that roller will collect anything that's a little bit too tall. And then that roller scrapes against that blade and it puts any of that icky stuff right there. It's just a function of how the machine works and it, it so every layer is nice and flat for it to lay the ink down on. So you scrape it off that blade and then you just put it back in. Easy peasy, just gets thrown away. And then we will, we inspect the blade to make sure there's no nicks in it because you don't want that. Hey, I got it off there. All right, I'm gonna go throw this away and then we'll put it back in. To put it back in, it's a little tough. So this has to, to rest in a spot, put the, that, that little piece right there. <laughs> Let's see. You gotta hope it makes contact. Almost, almost. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I did it. Finally. We're almost there. The last thing to check is the waste tank and that's right over here. The waste ink tank is right here and you just kind of slide it out and then you're good to go. So I've emptied this not that long ago uh, it's, it's still got some in there just from purging processes or cleaning processes or anything like that. Any of the ink it uses to clean the nozzles in the heads, it, it goes into here. Um, and this is uncured. You can't pour this down the drain. You can't drink this. Don't do anything like that. You need to dispose of this in accordance with your local municipality laws for uh, a hazardous waste. Gloves are good and dispose of it properly, please. That's the cleaning process for the Mimaki 3D UJ 2207. And it's a bit involved and it took a little bit of learning, but you know, I, I made it through it. And then you just do that before each print. And you do that so that the machine maintains itself so that it's nice and clean and it's, it's proper and it can do what it needs to do to make these freaking amazing models. This pumpkin spice warrior, this really cool bunny, the alien here, and the creepy snowman are all by Wexter. And when I first got this machine, I utilized Wexter as almost like a, a test subject because there's only certain file formats that this takes and they have to be properly colored. And we worked it out and now that process is in place. And I've got a lot of other really cool models and designers I'm gonna show you really soon. But just know every time I print something, that's the process I have to do to clean it up and get it ready for the next print. But you've made it this far, so I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at what you're gonna see next on this machine. I'm gonna zoom in really quick and you're gonna see the next two models that this Mimaki machine is gonna print. You recognize those? Do those look familiar? Huh? Hooray! It's really cool that I get to show you the industrial process for some machines and the fruits of the labor, because those models look insane. Absolutely bonkers insane. It is a full color machine utilizing every color of the rainbow to make 
really cool stuff. Uh, you know, listen, thanks for making it this far. If you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more and fight for a cause you believe in and 3D print all the colorful things. And as always, high five. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Nailed it. High five.